Looks like somebody's landed in the naughty books of the internet and is in for a good old fashioned cancelling, something that I don't fancy. So look, here's the deal. A lot of shade has been thrown over JK Rowling and this game because she has a, um, let's say, a, a rocky past. But after a lot of thought, I've decided that I'm not letting her get in the way of a piece of art that I want to consume. This is a gaming channel. It's one and only focus is games and we're not letting it get all political, not in my sphere. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to be looking at the art and disconnecting it as best we can from the artist. That is the be all and end all of it. I won't hear anything else about it. So. Now that that's out of the way, let's have a look at the little game we're going to be getting our trophy funk on with today. Released in 2023 on the PlayStation 5, Hogwarts Legacy is an action role-playing game developed by Avalanche Software, or so Wikipedia tells me. It takes place well before any of that dickhead Harry Potter and his little gang of gonks were even a twinkle in their daddy's ball sack. We take the role of a never actually named student who for even lack of an explanation starts Hogwarts in year 5. We join him or her on his or her adventures around the admittedly large wizarding area of Scotland, maybe somewhere up there? Alas, we are already on an adventure of our own and we are seeking loot in the form of PlayStation trophies. With 46 of them up for grabs, it is my job here and now, dear viewer, to tell you which of these 46 I found to be the worst to get. So. If you've already played this game, it's time to have a look and see if you agree with my choices and if you're just looking to find out what you're in store for should you choose to play this game, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the five worst trophies in Hogwarts Legacy. As always friends, this list is in no particular order but we do save the worst trophy for last. A trophy being hard isn't necessarily a trophy being bad. So we take a look at the whole process of unlocking the trophies, what the trophies mean and see which ones are about as welcome as a ginger stepchild. Now, first on our list this fine evening is... Collector's Edition has us complete all collections. One man's trash is another man's treasure. It's the old adage, but in this case it's just wrong. With a ball slapping 500 plus items in this collection, you're going to be picking up all sorts of crap. Split into different categories, ranging from standard Revelio collectibles to literally every piece of clothing you can possibly pick up, spells, enemies, and much more. Collector's Edition is just a lot of dragging your ass around the world to the most obscure of places to find that one page that you just couldn't quite find or see before. I mean, it's not a terrible way to have you experience everything in the game. Hell, I mean, I know a lot of time and effort went into the design, but forcing me to see everything in close deal that's a little bit harsh i'm no die hard harry potter fan but that doesn't mean i don't enjoy it and what i don't care about however is the law behind every little thing in the world of wizarding i know this is a personal thing and a lot of you love that in-depth stuff but for me personally i prefer to have the story and the world shown to me not presented to me in the form of text wall that i collect with some arbitrary item actually collecting these items well, that ranges from mind-numbingly simple to why would this even be here levels of frustration. To be fair, you get a lot of it through just playing the story and keeping an eye out, but for some of the conjurations, they're just stupid. If you're into huge collectathons and lore, eh, this might be your jam. Speaking of massive collectathons, let's have a little chat about Merlin's beard. Strewn across the outer world of Hogwarts Legacy, for lack of a better term, there are 92 Merlin Trials. You'll see them on your travels with this icon, and they are definitely worth collecting, not just for the trophy. It's because the more of them you have, the bigger your inventory size is, so a collectible with a purpose then. So what's the problem? I mean, I know 92 of them is a lot to collect, but I even said it myself, they are worth it. Well, the problem lies in the fact that there aren't 92 Merlin Trials at all, there are actually 8 of them. They range from platforming, which you can cheese, to ball destruction, to flippendo challenges that I never understood, and even guiding fireflies back to their blue cube prison. So it's not just about collecting 92 things, it's performing one of these very few mini-games over and over again. Like I said, they are totally worth it to get the inventory space, it's quite restrictive in the early game, but they do get very boring very quickly, especially when every now and again, you'll get stuck on one. For me, it was often the ones where you had to bring a stack of balls back to the plinth. More than once, I just couldn't find all three stacks and would have to come back to it another time. You know, fresh eyes and all that. 
Anyway, again, if you're a collectible fan, this might be right up your street. If not, maybe we could have done with maybe a few less to slog through, or even just maybe, maybe more mini games. All right, so for the next one, I'm kind of cheating a little bit because it's actually four trophies, but if I added them to the list individually, well, that'd be a lame video. You have to do the exact same thing for all of them, with only the difference being the house that you choose at the start of the game, and I've chosen the Aura's Apprentice because, well, that's the one I have some footage of. Plus, you also get to do the Hufflepuff exclusive questline and go to Azkaban, so you know, that's, that's pretty cool. We have to get to the map chamber being a member of each of the houses, that being Gryffindor to unlock the Gryffindor in the Graveyard trophy, Slithering for the Toast of the Town trophy, Ravenclaw for the Wise Owl trophy, and finally, Hufflepuff for the Aura's Apprentice trophy. Now the map room doesn't appear for the first hour and a half to two hours of the game, so yep, that does mean you'll be seeing the opening soiree of Hogwarts Legacy at least four times. There's some basic save manipulation that you can do before the sorting ceremony that can potentially save you 20 minutes or so, but that has, let's say, varying degrees of success according to online opinion. Either way, regardless of how you do it, the fact remains that this will probably be the last few trophies that you get and if, like me, you're bored of the game at this point and just want to clean up the missing trophies, then one extra quest in the Hufflepuff story doesn't make up for the 6-8 to eight hours of my life that I've lost, having to replay the start of this game over and over again. I could understand if the opening of the game was wildly different for each house, but the fact remains that nope, it's the exact same for the most part. In fact, the house system plays little to no part in the entire story of the game. It's a missed opportunity if you ask me, but no one did. So moving on. On to the Spellmaster, a simple trophy that just has us collect all the spells in a game about casting spells. <laughs> well, mm, not all the spells. It seems that the forbidden curses don't count as spells anymore, but still. Imagine my surprise when this baby pops and I still have three mysterious spells that I potentially have access to. What could they be? To play devil's advocate here, the forbidden curses are just that, they're curses, not spells. So see, I do get that, I do understand, I don't want to see anyone bringing that up in the comments, believe me, I understand. But they appear to me in the same menu, I suppose, as the other spells, so that would tell me that they should be included. They're also optional and let's face it, bad. The curses in question are Crucio, Imperio and of course Avada Kedavra, all three of which are used by dark wizards who completely misunderstood the Hogwarts no cursing policy. Thank you, I'll see myself out. I could see why if for example you're playing a good wizard white knight character you wouldn't want or need access to such things but that's not what we care about. We are all about the bling and the rights for curses to be spells if they identify as such, and I just think that including the forbidden curses in the requirements for the all spells trophy would have made it a little bit more, I don't know, spicy to get? I can't think of a word I want to use here, but I'm sure at least a few of you will understand what I mean. I thought it was a glitch at first, but rest assured what this trophy is looking for is everything but these three criminally underrated spells. But then again, we already know that diversity is a bit of a sticky note around this area. Okay, too soon. Moving on. The nature of the beast breed every type of beast. Yep, this is my final choice for today's list and of course that means that to me, this was the worst trophy in Hogwarts Legacy. But why? Look at all the cute little things you can breed. Like the, the, the pupil or the, the thing that's only visible when you've seen actual death. Or the huge grip horn thing that tries to kill you before you... Jesus Christ, I thought this game was aimed at kids. Well, the problem lies to me in semantics. You see, through this whole game, I mean the whole game, you encounter poachers. They're one of the main enemy types. Of course, most of us know what one is, but for those who don't, poachers steal animals to breed them, skin them, sell them or do other unspeakable things. No matter how you look at it, it never ends well for the poor animals, be they magical or otherwise. So after being taught how to use the Greg Pap from our little house hell friend here, who also works against our wishes, we are sent out into the world to catch the animals for, the, for their ingredients and to breed them. So yeah, we're sent out to poach. Uh, we're sent out in the world to poach these little poor animals for our own personal and sometimes financial game. It's a little bit on the nose there, don't you think? But why this trophy specifically? Well, there are a few actual reasons I don't like it as a trophy. Number one, I just didn't find it fun. Having to hunt these animals is not always 
fun having to find the right genders in the right places not having a reliable way to track what you've done and what you haven't done it's super time consuming though thankfully you don't actually have to wait for the actual breeding to be done as just the action of instigating the breeding is enough which that makes it sound like i'm trying to describe having sex in a courtroom instig instigating the breeding <laughs> But yeah, of all the trophies in Hogwarts Legacy, for me personally, this one is the one I really enjoyed, like a hole in the head. But that's my little list, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? Let's have it out in the comments, eh? Remember, it's just my personal opinion. Results may vary. So, what closing thoughts do I have on Hogwarts Legacy as a platinum-worthy trophy in general? Well, it's one of those games where you'll be mostly getting everything from just playing the story and making sure that you just look beyond your periphery every now and then. Everything else you barely have to go out of your way for, and even when you do, for example, the battle arenas that I didn't mention, well, they're usually fun, so it makes up for it. There are a few bad eggs as per today's entries, but really, are they that bad? It's a fun game and it's not gonna tax your brain or abilities too much to unlock this piece of virtual precious metal so should you go for it uh, yeah if you've got the game you might as well please leave me a comment letting me know what trophies you found to be the worst in hogwarts legacy thank you for watching as always and i will see you in the next video arrivederci